Good afternoon um, and welcome. I don't know whether we are complete yet. I mean, I know that about 37 people enrolled for this session, so uh, maybe some, some more people will come. We'll actually start, uh, so my name is Anne Martin, I'm working for IMI, um, and I'll be your moderator for the session this afternoon. Um, this afternoon, uh, somebody, some of the speakers asked to swap around the presentations because on the draft agenda they were first and they have made the travel arrangements accordingly. So actually we are going to start with um, Emedia, uh, where Bernard Torrens and Alain Torsa <laughs> will be present. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Bernard Torrens from the Université de Lausanne and Bernard Torsa from uh, Servier will be um, explaining the e-media project to you. Okay, uh, <coughs> I will share the presentation with uh, Bernard Torrens indeed. So I'm pleased to present you the e-media project, uh, which uh, is exactly uh, focused on improving beta cell function and identification of diagnostic biomarkers from, for treatment monitoring in diabetes. But first, let me show you in the next slide and very rapidly the background of this project. Diabetes is a complex disease, but in fact, its definition is rather simple. Diabetes is a metabolic disease characterized by higher than normal blood glucose levels, the so-called, as you know, hyperglycemia, in the fasting states and, other me and uh, uh, or after meals. So you know that there are two major types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Oh, sorry. Uh, I will not oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I will not detail the main characteristics of these two types of diabetes. I would like just to focus on three points first, the more and largely, the most frequent is type 2 diabetes, 85 to 90 percent of diabetic patients, whereas for type 1 diabetes, the frequency is 10 to 15 percent of diabetic patients. And the second important point is that the alteration of the beta cell function is pivotal, is crucial in the disease. Obviously, this is not the same etiology and the same pathophysiology. In type 2 diabetes, there is no destruction of beta cells, but a decrease in the functional beta cell mass. We will see that after. Whereas in type 1 diabetes, there is a complete destruction of beta cells uh, according to uh, autoimmune process. The third point is that although, as I mentioned, the pathophysiology is very, diff very different, both disease result in huge complications, among which the most important, important are, micro, are microvascular and macrovascular complications. Micro, microvascular complications are uh, vessel uh, complications uh, which are uh, met in uh, the kidney and the retina, and macroangiopathic complications lead to cardio and cerebrovascular disease. So that even today, the lifespan of diabetic people is reduced con uh, compared to the whole population. So, as you know, diabetes is today a pandemic disease and certainly a huge public health issue. The number of patients in 2010 is 200, 
85 million people worldwide and for 2030, 439 uh, million people worldwide are expected and it's very important and uh, concerning that this increase is uh, in particular spreading to the younger population. And I repeat, and I will just say you some words about it, the pancre pancreatic beta cells are, as you know, sorry, but I know that you know, but may, let me remind you that these beta cells, the pancreatic beta cells are the cells which are releasing insulin, which is the key hormone in the regulation of glycemic control. So that, to be very, very schematic, in type 1 diabetes, if I can say the things are rather simple. There is a complete destruction of these beta cells, so there is no more insulin, and insulin can no more exert its action on its target tissues. So as a result, there is a hyperglycemia, which could be very severe. In type 2 diabetes, things are rather simple, if I can say. There is no a real destruction of beta cells, but there is beta cell failure, which is now known as a decrease, much probably a decrease in the beta cell mass with the progression of the disease and also a decrease in the beta cell function so that the insulin release is insufficient. And in conjunction with that, there is a decrease in the action of insulin, this trouble are interdependent and they result in hyperglycemia. So what, considering all uh, the, 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 the situation, what are the aims of tre treatment of type 2 diabetes? Because we will focus today on type 2 di diabetes, even the study on type 1 diabetes is not excluded in the immediate project. So the, the aim is to prevent early death and improve quality of life. And this is to prevent micro and macrovascular complications. And the way, the best way today that we know to reach these goals is to achieve opti optimal glycemic control. Today, in type 2 diabetes, there are several treatments. To be very schematic, there are treatments targeting the beta cell. The most known and the more ancient are the sulfonylureas. And there are treatments aiming at increasing, uh, improving glycemic control, um, glucose homeostasis, by tar targeting tissues as uh, like the liver or the muscle. This is the case of metformin and now the new class of tyrosine dions. Obviously, we have not to forget insulin, which is obviously the only treatment today for type 1 diabetes. So, if, sorry, these treatments are somewhat satisfying, but not completely satisfying. And in fact, all these approaches, finally there was seven different approaches, and no one prevents the progressive deterioration of glycemic control. Why? And this is illustrated by uh, well-known studies by the UK PDS showing clearly the progressive deterioration of glycemic control in type 2 diabetes. As you can see with conventional therapy, uh, the glycemic control is just stabilized at the beginning of treatment and increase and uh, the, the, it uh, decreases is in the worsened throughout the progression of the disease. Here, glycemic control is assessed by the so-called with the gold standard marker of glycemic control, HbA1c percentage, HB, and to summarize, the lowest is the AB, HbA1c percentage, the better is glycemic control. So that when high HbA1c is high, it indicates poor glycemic control. 